unless your business really relies on it, I'm going to say you don't need a logo and a website. You just need to get started. And to get started, you can choose the one thing that's going to attract paid clients. We choose to run businesses for various reasons. And I just feel like if we get streamlined into one way of doing things and not enjoying it, we might as well work for someone. I don't know where, whether I got this from somewhere else or my head, but I always say success breeds success because the minute you experience something that feels really good, you want more of it. I think teachers make for great business owners and not just tuition, tutoring business leaders, but any business leader. Hello and welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, the podcast that brings you the latest in the world of tutoring, edtech and education, and hopefully inspires in you the big change that each and every one of us is capable of. Qualified Tutor is an industry-leading tutor training organisation and online tutoring community for thousands of tutors around the world. This podcast is the voice of this community, where we aim to hear from tutors, teachers, entrepreneurs, coaches, business experts, students, tutorpreneurs, and more from the world of tutoring about what inspires them every day, how they can help tutors like you, and what they've learned about tutoring along the way. The question is, what will you learn today? Hello and welcome to the 146th episode of the Qualified Tutor podcast. My name is Ludo Miller, the host of this podcast. Welcome back to our regular listeners. Welcome to any of you for whom this is your first time listening to the Qualified Tutor podcast. And of course, a huge welcome back to today's guest, Samantha McMahon. Samantha, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me back. It was um, it was lovely to uh, receive your message and to bring you back on. Samantha is part of a small group of individuals, a very lucky group if I may <laughs> say, uh, that have appeared on this podcast not once but twice, um, and we really couldn't be more pleased because the first time Sam came on, she it was a real game changer for lots of our audience um, and we covered a great deal about a topic that is central to what you guys, our listeners focus on, which is building tutoring businesses um, and really understanding how small business and the tutoring industry work together, which is exactly where Samantha sits. Um, And also because, you know, I have no fear bringing you back on Samantha because um, (laughs) your content is constantly evolving and is, we're not going to be having the same conversation as we had last time. Um, And I know that, what we'll be hearing is, is is fresh, is original, is 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 very nicely aligned with where we are now, which is the back end, really the back end of 2022, um, and moving into 2023. Um, so uh, if you haven't heard of Samantha, I can't believe you haven't. That means you haven't listened to all our episodes, so you should. Uh, but Samantha is the founder of the Upgrade Project, um, as well as the Tutors Mastermind, which is a a, a suite of live workshops and collaborative. Um, uh, discussions, um, training videos, mentoring, and, and much, much more, all aimed at making you, making your tutoring business better. Um, so many of our listeners and com- community members are part of this mastermind, will know exactly what I'm talking about uh, and know Samantha very well. And let's hope those of you who don't know Samantha yet uh, will do so over the next <laughs> half an hour or so. So Samantha, um, so, so good to have you back on. Um, and as listeners normally know, we'd ask about um, our guests why, but Samantha's already asked, answered that question in, in the previous episode. So I gather you were able to find, a little rummage around in your lodge recently, you were able to find some old school reports. Is that right? Yeah, we were looking for Christmas decorations in the loft and I came across a few. Uh, my school reports the common thing was that I needed to concentrate a bit more because I quite liked having a bit of a chat um, and that I wasn't reaching my potential. And actually, it's interesting in hindsight, I think the whole kind of school model was part of that for me because the minute I went to university, it, it ch- everything changed. Um, also, something that is a bit of a running joke in my family, well, no one would let me forget, is that art wasn't my strength. 
Um, and we went on this school trip. I don't know. We went to see some famous ship or something. And this is what we found recently. I'd drawn a picture of it. We had to draw a picture of it. And the teacher wrote, um, Samantha, is this what it actually looked like? Maybe try again. Um, <laughs> which and I, I think I was quite thick skinned about it and I, I just had another go so yeah they they were really my my school reports it was a little bit of a must try harder um but it was nothing too dramatic nothing terrible or anything do you think that has led you to become someone who doesn't settle for anything less than the best no <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be slick and say, yes, it has. But no, it hasn't really. I mean, I think, you know, when I was at school, I was I was a kid and, you know, I was a child and I loved having a chat and I was social. And I'm, I'm really glad I was because I actually got a great experience from my school life because of it. Um, but when I went to university, I responded really well to the freedom of my parents not telling me to go and study and, you know, just not being told what to do worked really well for me. And you know, I, I graduated with a first, but I did awfully in my A-levels. And it was actually that first that was the trigger because I I don't know where whether I got this from somewhere else or my head, but I always say success breeds success because the minute you experience something that feels really good, you want more of it. And I think actually that was my turning point. That was when I thought, I don't really want to settle for not feeling great about what I'm doing or not producing results. It's not a nice feeling. And if I feel like I'm not good at something or strong at something, I'll, I'll try and change it. And, you know, that applied to even professional qualifications. When I qualified as a, as a trainer, as a business trainer, it's, just, you know, professional exams, it's a pass and it's a fail. And I didn't care. I didn't want a pass. I, I cared about the percentage I got. It was like a personal achievement. So, yeah, I would say it was probably more university that really triggered that change. Yeah, it's funny. It's it's school reports are something that I've brought into this podcast because they're such a kind of core part of it. But actually, as you say, university, you know, I, I can't even remember. Do you get reports at university? Or no. No, not really. I think that's the problem is university is, is a little bit more of a free, uh, just as you say, it's, it doesn't have reports specifically because it's not about, you know, uh, it's not about exactly, you know, marking you every kind of term or whatever. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll bring in, you know, school reports or you can, you know, talk about your university experience. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I remember dreading report time because I knew my parents would sit me down and tell me how I had to stop talking to my friends and all of this. And what I would do, knowing that it was report time, is I would I would fix up, you know, the last last couple of weeks before report. So I kind of feel like it was a bit it wasn't really effective because instead of me, yeah. it wasn't, it didn't, you know, I, it's not like I, I implemented all those changes all year round. I just did it for the last week before parents evening or the report so that I'd get a decent one. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure how I, 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 you know, I've never actually even thought about it until this very moment. Um, but yeah, interesting well, question. It's bringing back at least good memories. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> so, um, Obviously, the, the the primary focus of your professional life at the moment is is tutor tutor business coaching, you know, business coaching in the in the realm of tutoring and education companies. Can you tell us a bit more about how exactly you help small business leaders and what that coaching kind of entails? Yeah, sure. Well, I think the best way I can summarize what I do and how I do it is probably by starting with what I don't do. Um, I don't do formulas. I, I don't believe there's one way of doing things or that there can be a one size fits all. And that's not just in the education business space. I think that's in every space. So what I do do is I help people design businesses according to the nuances. So, you know, I'm an English tutor, uh, one out of thousands, but how I do things are a little bit different to other people and how they do things are different to me. So there are nuances, but also according to people's preferences and their lifestyles and commitments, because, you know, we choose to run businesses for various reasons. And I just feel like if we get streamlined into one way of doing things and not enjoying it, we might as well work for someone because it's way less stressful. You get the benefits and all the rest of it. So I, I'm a really, really strong believer in helping people tailor their businesses to what they like and what they need out of it. So in line with that, 
I offer different forms of support, but everything I offer is very flexible. So I work with people on a one-to-one basis for completely tailored coaching, but the maximum sessions they can book in advance is four. Um, Again, I don't let people commit for longer because I don't want them to pay for something they might not need. It's a fluid journey. Um, I have the Tutors Mastermind and there I have a great community of really proactive education business owners. They're not actually all tutors, but the mastermind still works for them. And there we have group coaching sessions, extra training in the Facebook group, downloadable resources, and, you know, just lots of like good stuff. And again, it's flexible. People pay monthly and they can cancel at any time. And my newest offering, because I, this was triggered by someone actually asking me for this, is what I've called the training jukebox. And this is a growing hub of resources. You take it, you just pick and choose what you want and you buy it and you have lifetime access to it. I, I say um, you take, you pick and choose. I only have one thing in there right now because it's quite new. I have a hundred content prompts um, that are tailored very much to education business owners um, because so many people I meet you know, struggle with things like marketing because they simply don't know what to write. Um, and there'll be more added to the jukebox soon. And finally, as you kindly mentioned, I, I help people for free um, through my weekly podcast, which is called Upgrade Your Education Business. Yeah, that is um, a podcast we pointed to when Samantha last spoke and which I continue to do. So that is um, a really very, very helpful podcast in that sense. Um, and, and I love the way that, you know, there's your advocating f- well, you're advocating nicely for podcasts, but also, yeah, I mean, the podcast that you, the podcast you run is a completely free way to access a, a, a little, even more than just a teaser of what you do for education businesses. So, if you're sitting here thinking, oh, I'm not sure if I could pay the subscription for a, for a monthly coaching, start with the podcast because I can guarantee if you listen to all four or five episodes of, of Samantha's podcast, then you'll know exactly where to go next and where Samantha can help you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the number of people uh, who listen to this podcast, I know in our community who, who work with you, Samantha, is, is, is awesome. I think that's testament to um, where and how much you are helping um, those, those businesses. Um, oh. And some of the testimonials you get, Samantha, are pretty amazing. So um, <laughs> thank you. Really doing good work. Um, thank you. But for those, well, even for those people who do work with, you, work with you, but even for those who don't, it's start of 2023, you know, just coming off the back of 2022. What are some of the challenges that a founder faces in setting up their tutoring business today at this at this time? Mm, really good question. I'm glad you specifically mentioned at this time because I think that, that in itself is a challenge. Um, you know, you might be on a Facebook group and you say, oh, can someone help me with X, Y, and Z? And a lot of the advice will be what someone has done. But like what I did when I set up the business was in 2017. We've had a pandemic since then, which changed the face, the landscape. So I think what you've just said is actually really important. But in, in, from the people I've met, I think there are three things that really, really flag up for me. I think the first one is a scarcity mindset where people feel like they're entering a really crowded market. They feel scared. They're not going to be able to compete. They're not going to be able to attract students. And this can lead to some, you know, bad decisions like offering too much for free or going into the market really cheap. And I say they're bad decisions because while they seem like quick ways to get your business going, and honestly, my very first business, which I set up when I was 22, that's exactly what I did. It's a really logical and intuitive way to do it. But what ends up happening is you have to then remedy it later. And I work with so many tutors where we are remedying that because they're now at a stage where they feel like they're working loads of hours, but they're not earning enough. They, you know, when they add it up, all the hours they're working in their business, they're kind of on minimum wage. And it's really difficult to have those conversations with parents to say, um, my prices are going up. So I think that that scarcity mindset can often drive that. And I would encourage anybody to really future proof and to think about tomorrow instead of just today, but also not to undervalue the the experience and value they're bringing to the table. Yes, you might be a new tuition business, but you're not a new uh, educator. You still have years of experience that's underpinning that. And that's worth something. So, and you know, money is a communication tool. It's not about the bottom line. You're communicating that value proposition of what you're putting forward. 
Um, so I think that that's one thing that can that can be tricky. Um, and I think a second challenge is just not knowing where to start. Uh, you know, do I do my terms and conditions, a website, a logo, a this and a that? And traditionally, that's where people start. They start by creating a logo and a website. Then they announce, I have a new business. But I'm going to go against that a little bit. I know that's really common practice. Again, I've done that. But unless your business really relies on it, I'm going to say you don't need a logo and a website. You just need to get started. And to get started, you can choose the one thing that's going to attract paid clients. Now, I've put my money where my mouth is. When I launched Upgrade Your Education Business, I did this. I did not have a website. I launched without it. And I've advised some clients to do this as well. And something any new tutor might be interested in is um, I worked with a client in 2020. He set up his brand new business. He, he wasn't even a tutor. He had been a teacher a while ago. So he wasn't really in the space or networking at all. And he set it up during lockdown. He didn't have, he just had a Facebook group actually. And, you know, what I would advise would vary person to person, but he had a group. He didn't have a website. He, his books were full within six months. He started developing waiting list, And now we're now in 2022. Yes. <laughs> okay. I've lost track of time. We're in 2022 and he still doesn't have a website because he doesn't feel the need to have one. So this whole traditional route of logo, website, this, that, I think the most important thing is to get started, to get clients through the door. Because then once you start getting paid, well, that money can pay for your website. It can pay for hosting or whatever it might be. So I think it, I think at the moment we can be really flexible about how we put our name out there. We don't have to go with tradition because social media is huge. It's a big part of where people, consumers go shopping. And the third thing is that I think it's just making key decisions like how much do I charge? Um, I'd be lying if I said that I've never struggled with this or that I don't struggle with this. I still do. But there are ways to navigate it. And I think it's important to come up with a structure that works for you and connects with the kind of clients that you, you want to work with. Again, it's it's a communication tool more than, well, if I work X amount of hours, how much will I earn? You know, that's part of the equation, but part of it has to be, well, what kind of impression do I want to put across and who do I want to attract? So I think they're the, the three main, I'm, I'm sure there are more, but I think they're the three main challenges. And the one thing I would say to anybody who's trying anything new, not just setting up their business, and I remind myself of this as well, is that I think there are three stages to, to anything. The first stage is just to get started. You don't have to focus on getting it perfect, just get started. The second stage is to get good. And then the third stage is to get intentional. You can't have one stage without another. And whenever I look at new things through this lens, it just makes me feel safer and it alleviates pressure. When I started the podcast, oh my goodness, like my first few podcast episodes were awful, like the quality, everything. Um, now I'm focusing on trying to make them better. And, you know, as time goes on, they'll just get better and better but I can still see people are listening to the early episodes. So, you know, you can still be successful without worrying about being strategic and getting everything polished and perfect. Wasn't I one of the first few podcast episodes? Yeah, but yours was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean my solo ones. I remember my first one. Weirdly, it's the most popular one, maybe just because of time. It was 40 minutes long. And, you know, now I, I average on about 15 minutes, let's say, because that's about right. I've realized that's what people like. It's really manageable for me. But I, I, you know, I didn't really think about it. I didn't invest in a microphone at the time. I was speaking through my webcams microphone. You know, there were so many things about the quality, but it's fine. It just, it got my podcast started. And it's the same with, you know, tuition business. Okay. You don't have a slick onboarding and invoicing system. That's fine. Just start teaching, start teaching, just do the basics, get basic terms and conditions out there. So you're protected and start getting those testimonials and the experience and getting your name out there. And then it's this snowball effect. Things can build upon that. Oh, if I had a motto, it would be do it your way. Yeah. Just do things your way on your terms. And whether I'm speaking to someone who's launching, growing or scaling, or not a tutor, but working in the education business space, the advice is still the same. And my aim is still the same. So someone might come to me and say, right, I really, uh, you know, I'm fully booked with one-to-one. -one. I want to set up group classes. I won't just show them how to set up group class them up classes. I'll ask them, why do you want group classes? It starts with that question of, 
is shall we just check this is definitely the direction you want to take your business in because if you want to make more per hour there are loads of ways to do it this isn't the only way so you know i would say the thing that drives everything that i do is that we have to make our businesses something that we love that we enjoy we're not going to love it every single moment of every day but it's got to give us what we need out of it otherwise it feels pointless if we're just you know, doing a routine and we're not enjoying it and we don't feel fulfilled and we're being forced to post every single day at five o'clock on LinkedIn because that's what, you know, it's, you've got to do what works for you. Um, yeah, it's got to be sustainable. I love, I love that. I've heard before people saying that, you know, business coaches, um, can often act like a bit of a co-founder, you know, you are there being the sounding board that's, yeah, when when they come up with ideas because people who start tutoring businesses you know lots of them are tutors they've got great ideas they're very clever they they understand how to work with people but they like many tutors they don't have someone else to to bounce those ideas off and and you are in that perfect position of being a high trust environment which is professional but also being very close understanding the business very very well you know asking them questions like do you think that really you know that's the right way for your business to go maybe something more like this or here's an idea for this i think that that get started get good get intentional um beautiful <laughs> beautiful i think that's that's Thank such you. an easy three step. it's been a real uh, saver for me actually because i started a youtube channel earlier this year it's growing extremely slowly and i cringe when i watch some of the videos but i'm keeping it up there i'm going to keep it there because i'm just experimenting you know I, i'm just getting started and when i divide it in those phases the reason why it helps me and why i share it with other people is because i know it's fine i don't need to be good right now it takes that pressure off i know that's coming next that's exciting it will be really good at some point but right now I'm just getting started and that's okay and I think it just takes the pressure off because we do or you know we often expect to go from zero to a hundred straight away to expect whatever we're launching it has to be ready it has to be perfect teachers mastermind I launched in three phases the form it's in right now wasn't the form it started in back in March um again you know it's evolving it's still changing it's still getting better and i think that's all right thanks to episode sponsors the tutor index hi there i'm chris co-founder of the tutor index it's incredibly exciting to be sponsoring this episode of the qualified tutor podcast whether you're just starting out or have been tutoring for a number of years the Tutor Index provides a great platform to promote yourself to new and existing clients and allows you to teach how you want, when you want. Best of all, we charge zero commission or finders fees, meaning you keep more of what you earn. So sign up today for your free profile at thetutorindex.com. Now, we, I, I want to shift this conversation just slightly. We're just not... I mean, towards a, a, a bit of a close here, just a couple of questions I want to ask mm. next. Um, and I was saying there that, you know, often tutoring business leaders have been tutors and a lot of the time they've been teachers as well. Mm. Sometimes they might even still be teachers while they're setting up their tutoring business. Um, and I, I wanted to know what your thoughts were on this because you've worked with lots of tutoring business leaders. I wonder if the skill set of a teacher, an ex-teacher, can make for a good tutoring business leader and if so why that might be I think in in most ways absolutely yes uh, because I think teachers I mean I remember this from the classroom you know we have skills without really realizing we have them because we just use them every single day you know split second decisions and fast moving and people outside of the profession spend thousands on on learning some of those skills you know for instance how many schemes of work have we created? You know, if you've, if you've been a teacher, you have created, you can do it standing on your head. But people spend loads learning how to write a course, how to create a course. We know how to do that. We can navigate difficult conversations with parents and students. That translates to some of the challenges that people in other industries might face as business leaders. You know, we multitask. It's it's We have to. We can't be a teacher without that the ability to do that. So they're just a couple of examples, but I think there are so many more. I think 
the area that maybe lets us down as ex-teachers is really mindset more than anything, especially around things like money or being salesy, so to speak, uh, which is something we've actually been focusing on in the mastermind. I'm sure we'll return to it because it's a huge thing. I don't want to sell. I feel pushy. I don't, you know, I find it kind of uncomfortable. And I think that I certainly found when I left teaching, there was this big kind of period of time where I needed to decompress and deinstitutionalize, because as a teacher you do get used to um overworking and going beyond because it's for the kids it's for the kids that's what you're that's the driving force there's this emotive thing and so when you then put your business hat on well you can't just be driven with but it's for the kids but it's for the kids and let me offer everything for free and let me do this and oh I don't want to charge too much because the thing is, is that that's not going to pay the bills, you know, and that's that's the very practical reality of it. When you're a teacher, you get paid a salary. So, you you know, it can be for the kids and you don't have to think quite so, what's the word, um, quite so, I don't know, formulaically, should I say? But I think that transition to picking the best bits of being an educator and just tweaking those areas that make you a really strong business leader um, I think it makes, I think teachers make for great business owners and not just tuition, tutoring business leaders, but any business leader. And, and the thing that I will say, just as a caveat to those, those weaknesses potentially is that being a teacher, you get very used to reflection, self reflection all the time and CPD. And so we're not actually afraid of learning new things. We're not afraid of saying, I could do this better. So let me try. Let me learn this and fix this. We're very, very used to it. We're arguably, sometimes a bit more thick skinned. I know I had to be working in secondary school. Um, so, so overall, yeah, I think teachers make amazing, amazing business people. So one of the reasons I love working in this space. Yeah. And, and we've seen lots of teachers leaving the profession, um, you know, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, and I think tutoring is, tutoring is, is one of the key avenues they explore. Uh, and I think yeah. it's really important to speak to them and to, to provide as much information on that because as we know as a as qualified tutor as the love tutoring community is that a lot of ex-teachers who've been in the system for 15 20 30 years there is that sense of wait well hang on what what do I do now I I have Mm. to do this myself um and and that lack of confidence I think misplaced often that lack of confidence of of how to represent themselves as a business just yeah kind of I don't want to charge people I, I'm happy to work overtime we see that the whole time in our community and people going above and beyond for their their fellow tutors um, and I think that comes from from the classroom environment um, I agree and there's also that phrase that I hear a lot of oh but I'm just a teacher and you know that you know a lot of people their journey has been university teaching and then that's it that's all they've kind of done um and I think that's really undervaluing the, the number of skills that you have that are really transferable into being a business leader. Well, I think you're speaking to such a large proportion of the education market there, Samantha. Um, so thank you so much for, for, for coming on and for, for sharing all that you do, basically sharing your, your business to some extent with, with us. That's very, <laughs> very kind. And now a brief word from last week's guest, Mira Vasudeva whose episode you can catch after this. Hi, my name is Mira Vasudeva, and I really enjoyed being on the Qualified Tutor podcast as it gave me the opportunity to do something different and try a new experience. I also really enjoyed the chance to just discuss teaching and tutoring as I love speaking about both. With regard to what I learned about myself and my business from being on this pub podcast, I think it really allowed me to come out of my comfort zone and also realise that coming out of my comfort zone isn't as scary as it initially seems. It can actually lead to really exciting opportunities. In addition to this, with regard to my business, this whole experience allowed me to just pause and reflect, which is something I don't do enough. And it's so powerful to just sit back and appreciate my journey so far. Finally, one thing I'd say to a future guest is if you feel nervous, Ludo's kind and calming presence will instantly put you at ease. Try and enjoy the opportunity and the experience. I 
just have one final question, Samantha, mm. which is, this is January 2023. What is next for you? What's next for Samantha McMahon? What's next for me? Well, I think what's next for me is actually just enriching and maintaining what I've already set up. Um, over the last couple of years, I would say I've been on, I would say, quite a, a, a treadmill in a way of developing new things, launching new things. And launching is pretty scary. It's, it takes a lot of energy. So I just actually want to enjoy what what I've what I've created, if you like, and continue enriching that. Um, as a tutor, I'm really happy. I work with the clients I've got now, our clients I've worked with for years and will continue working, you know, for, with for years, which I love. And I have some resources I'm developing for children. And on the business coaching side, I, I really enjoy the clients that I work with. I love being part of their businesses. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to making the mastermind, making what I offer better and better. Well, look at that. That is a, a journey to follow for 2023. So <laughs> if, you, if you haven't already become part um, of the mastermind, then you can head to um, choosesmastermind.com. Is that right? It would be upgradeyoureducationbusiness.com. And through that, you can see everything that I offer a little bit more about me. Also a link to my uh, podcast. Awesome. So that's the place to go, upgradeyoureducationbusiness.com. Um, and you can also connect with uh, with Samantha on LinkedIn as well. I'll, I'll put yeah. the, the, the link in the, in the show notes as always. Um, but Samantha, thank you for joining us on the 142nd. I was actually having a look back at what your last episode number was. I think it was about episode number 102 or something. Oh, right. <laughs> I couldn't quite remember, but I was wondering if there was any kind of links between the two episode numbers. I don't think there were, but um, yeah, thank you very, very much for, for joining us again. Oh, thank you for having me again. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so thanks listeners for, for joining us. Um, we will see you all again next time for the 147th episode, but um, happy new year for those celebrating it. Um, and, uh, and we look forward to uh, hearing from you uh, in the community um, and in our qualified tutor podcast and support group as well. Um, so yeah, but for one final time, Samantha, thank you very much and see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Your next step is to check out the Love Tutoring Community, and in particular, Love Tutoring Community Connect, a new premium membership space which will serve all your subject-specific CPD needs alongside a friendly, professional community space that meets regularly. Visit qualifiedtutor.org slash transformational dash training to find out more about our CPD accredited level two safeguarding and off-qual recognized courses, the first of their kind in the tutoring industry. See you there.